What's up guys? I have another video for you guys today and it's going to be my Rescue Ace deck profile. Now, I think it's pretty well built right now. I think it's a well fit and obviously I bounced ideas off a couple people. Obviously I got a couple ideas from other YouTubers that have shown off the, the deck as well. Um, and then I kind of just kind of formed it into one little deck. Uh, yeah, we'll just get straight into it. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe and I can kind of explain as things go by. Alright guys, getting into this deck profile, um, I enjoyed the deck a lot and I think this deck has a lot of potential coming up and especially obviously later if you guys see an OCG format, Diablo Star makes the deck really really good. Um, that's another topic we can talk about later. Uh, I'll just get into the deck profile. I did, my locals only has three rounds so I only played the three rounds and probably a couple games with some friends with it and I still feel really good about it. Uh, especially with this upcoming format with Mana Diem being into play. Um, if you guys watch a couple of my videos, you can see how those matchups went. But yeah, let's get straight into it. Uh, this is mandatory. We have to have the three Hydrant. Um, if you don't have Hydrant, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so three Hydrant. It's mandatory. This is your starter. This is your searcher. Uh, you just you really need it to kind of go off. Uh, if you don't have it go off, I mean, it really just depends on your hand as well. Um, I play two Turbulence. Turbulence is probably the best card in your deck. Uh, you Once you have it resolved, you pretty much start steamrolling. You get all your set back row, you get your set trapped, your spells, and because of Hydrant, you're allowed to access one of those and activate it, which will end up probably being Alert or Rescue, but it just really depends on how your hand turns out. Uh, you play the three Impulse, which is the main hand trap of the deck. This one allows you to tribute itself from your hand or face up on the field, special summon a rescue ace from your hand. Or sorry, special summon a rescue ace from your deck. Uh, like I said, this is probably, I compare it to Havness, but at the same time, it really hurts if it gets ashed <laughs> and you really need it to get off. Um, then you have the three airlifters. This is uh, another starter. Uh, airlifter is kind of one of your main starters that you want it to be. Airlifter is pretty broken because you normal summon it. It allowed you to search a rescue spell. So you can search emergency, which is the new spell that came out of Dune. And you just start steamrolling all your combos from there. Uh, you activate emergency, special, let's say, rescue hydrant. Uh, tribute of airlifter. Hydrant search the uh, turbulence. Turbulence banish the emergency and the airlifter. You guys can see where I'm going from there. <laughs> then we got the two preventers. Uh, I only play two, only because I don't want to brick on it. You really need to banish from your graveyard. Same reason as Turbulence, you need to banish from your graveyard. Um, you can special some of these off of Emergency, but it's not the most wanted play when it comes to those aspects. Uh, but having this on board, if you do get it on board, is so good. You're allowed a quick effect Book of Moon, you're in one of your opponent's monsters, and <laughs> that works so much in your favor, especially against like Pearly. Book of Mooney, one of their monsters, is like so OP. Or even against like Mana Diem, Book of Mooney, they're normal summoning, normal summon, so they can't special summon their little ball. That's broken as well. Uh, also, when this card is sent to the grave, so even if you link summon with it and you have one of the monsters that you banish off of it, and you, you could just special summon it back. There's a lot of neat combos you can do with it, especially like you banish a Hydrant and then you get to special, you send this, you link this off. Go into like Mud Dragon or whatever. Or go into Proxy, Proxy go into Mud Dragon. And obviously this specials back to Hydrant, Hydrant Search, and blah, blah. You know where I'm going from there. Uh, I did play the one Fire Engine and the one Fire Attacker. Now, depending on what you're playing against, you can special summon one of these off of the Impulse. Or uh, if you have it in hand and you special summon a Rescue Ace Monster, you can special one of them uh, by triggering it to special summon itself. Uh, like I said, Depending on what you're going up against, this one, if your opponent adds a card from your deck to their hand, you're allowed to draw two, discard one, which is pretty good, depending on if you're playing hand traps or not. Uh, Fire Engine, uh, if your opponent special summons, you're allowed to special summon a level uh, four lower rescue ace monster. Uh, except this one's, like, I mean, it's going to be from your hand, deck, or graveyard, so that you can utilize that to your advantage a lot. So if you do link summon, and you, let's say you go into Sunlight Wolf, and you left one of your monsters in the graveyard and you just decided to add ash back because you're cool <laughs> it happens but uh and you leave one of your monsters in the graveyard you have this on board and sick play you know like you could uh 
use this effect, special summon under Sunlight Wolf, Sunlight Wolf, add another monster back to your hand, and it's just, it's cool. Uh, speaking of, you play the three hand traps, three ash blossoms. Uh, it's just mandatory. It's a fire deck to end up working into your favor. Um, yeah, standard. Getting into the rescue spells, you got three emergency. This is mandatory at three. This is what makes this kind of what make the de makes the deck eligible to play right now. Um, first of all, it's quick play. So dodging hand traps is really cool. Uh, you special summon from your deck, you get rid of whatever monster that's been targeted. Let's say if you're targeted for Imperm or if you're targeted for Valor. I don't know, it's just that's really that's a really cool aspect of it as well. Uh, also, you know, there's just that one card combo with airlifter, airlifter at emergency, emergency special, tribute to airlifter, you know what I'm talking about. Just so cool. Uh also if you choose to use one of your rescues or alerts. Uh, in the graveyard or activate when you after you set it and then it goes to the graveyard you can banish this card from your graveyard to set one of those back to your field which is also another cool thing you can do uh, speaking of so you got alert rescue and hq you only play one of each uh because you can recycle it back with the hq uh, that's another cool thing you can use hq to shuffle back from your banished and your graveyard uh, and that comes to a huge advantage, especially when you're drawing one and you end up drawing like either the rescue hand traps or you're drawing other stuff that utilizes to your engine or you're used against your opponent. That's another cool thing. Um, alert and rescue. So alert, I think it's really cool because uh, if you control a hydrant, you can actually just add it from add any monster from your deck. Um, then rescue. Uh, is actually really cool because if you control a hydrant, you can end up monster reborning a monster from your opponent's graveyard. Now, I had an opportunity, if you guys saw in one of my videos, where I was able to use rescue monster reborn my opponent's baron, which I didn't do, but if I did that, I feel like I could have won earlier, uh, and that would have been amazing. But, yep, you live and learn. Everybody should know, you know, things like that come up. Uh, getting into the tech cards, we got a one for one, instant fusion, and rota. Um, see, this is where it changes a little bit. Some people are not going to be playing Instant Fusion. I play Instant Fusion for the reason of I, I really want to either have a, a Mud Dragon on board, or I want to have Millennium Eyes Restrict, or um, I don't know. It just it allows me that access to keep comboing and not have to worry about my opponent's hand traps. Uh, whereas one for one, it allows me the access to get to Hydrant. Uh, it's not the best. But I also want to say it is the best where it starts your combos. So it's a weird aspect because if you have another monster that you don't want to get rid of, that's, you know, it just feels weird. <laughs> uh, reinforcements of the army get you started. You just kind of have to play it. It's just so broken. <laughs> uh, getting into the other tech cards, so we have three super poly. So three super poly is broken right now. Now, it might not be great going into, you know, the cash tier matchup because they all have different attributes or going into, uh, it could be going good going into Pearly. It just depends on what their end board ends up like. Uh, I've seen Pearly players mess up and they have two of the same attribute, different types, and I just go into my Mud Dragon, start my plays, and I end up washing their field. But Super Poly is just so broken right now. Uh, even in general, I went up to Mana DM player. I went up against this Mana DM player. He set up, uh, he set Baron de Fleur, uh, Dispater, Chaos Angel, and Appaloosa. And I thought, wow, uh, I, this is pretty broken. <laughs> and he had both traps. He had a counter trap and uh, the Scareclaw um, trap that's allowed to pop too. And I still cleared his field. Now, I should have won that game because I ended up misplaying in a different way, but I used Super Poly, going to use the Baron and the Dispater, going to Exquisite, and then um, I should have used Kamungus to tribute over the Chaos Angel, Exquisite attack over the Appalosa, and then um, Exquisite bring back Dispater, Dispater bring back Omega, and it's just such a broken card because of that access, uh, the accessibility of it. Uh, other tech cards, I played two ta uh, two tactics, or sorry, one tactics, one thrust, or two thrust. Um, this is alright to me. Uh, I played these over Droll and Lockbird. Droll and Lockbird is really good right now, but I don't have access to the Droll and Lockbird, so I ended up playing these over it. It worked in my favor. 
uh, I think I used this a, almost every game. <laughs> and I, I either grabbed the talents or I ended up grabbing uh, something else that I ended up needing because I was able to get uh, get this or get a uh, pot of prosperity or get yeah, impermanence. But yeah, I think it's just a really good utilization. Your, your deck can easily bait stuff as well. So you guys will live and learn from that. Pot of prosperity, as they talked about. Um, you just need it. It just really grabs your engine. This does conflict with HQ. Um, I've had it a couple times where I really wanted to HQ, but I prosperity, and I was like, damn, big sad. Uh, the trap cards, we got the two the two traps, which is the extinguish and the contain. I don't play the third one. The third one, I think it's just really bad. Uh, contain's really cool. Extinguish is really cool. It's like having a no material and a combat of grave-like effects. Are, they're nice. It's just really important on how you use it when you use it because you cannot let it go to waste because you need to utilize every single card that you have in this deck because if you make one single misplay it really hurts and it's almost like the same effect as pearly where if you mess up one play it really is important that you can pick yourself back up or you make the correct play uh last two cards i play are infinite impermanence i couldn't fit the third because i really wanted to play the tactics variant uh the two infinite permanents i always had access to it whether if i drew it or I had the tactics access but yeah it's good you it's a really good hat trap right now especially with this format coming up failures and impermanence are things uh, i'm just gonna get straight into the side deck i got three shifters now um i thought about maining these just for funsies but it's not good in the main <laughs> but you can play around it you can play with it uh, you need it using it against your opponent. It's shifter. I mean, everybody hates shifter. I do too. Uh, three Kamangas. You know, you need your out to Noir. You need your out to the big monsters. Uh, yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, three cosmic or two cosmic cyclone, one harpies. Uh, these are. I think it's a good ratio. I uh, according to my sighting patterns, it fits. It works. Uh, I got the three goes in match. Now I know some people main these, especially in rescue ace. Uh, I'm. I don't think right now, currently, it's the right decision, uh, especially with the super poly. Uh, super poly just clears boards where this one prevents it. You can sight it in going first, which is why I'm sighting it. Um, but later on, I do feel rescue ace will end up turning into a more control variant, similar to labyrinth, and these will probably be in the main deck. Uh, three judgment. You're afraid of Harpy's Feather Duster. You're afraid of uh, evenly matched, and you just need to protect yourself. Especially going first, you need to protect yourself. Um, I have thought about a tech choice where playing Lord of Heavenly Prison. Still not sure how I feel about that because if I do play the Lord of Heavenly Prison, I will probably want to play Eradicator, and playing Eradicator is always toxic, and I think it's the correct play, but. I just don't know how I want, how I feel about it in this deck yet. Obviously more, as I play more with it, uh, I will learn all the tech choices and go from there um, and see how I will end up playing out. Uh, fusions, we got the one Millennium Eyes Restrict, one Mud Dragon, one Earth Golem, one Garua, one Starving Venom, and one Exquisite. I need all the Super Poly options. Uh, this is broken against Mana Diem. Starving Venom is broken against any tier or any uh, branded variants or even I've had it happen against Pearly. It's it's kind of dumb. Uh, Garua Mud Dragon standard. You don't really need any explanation for this. Earth Golem, one Cyrus and one Link Monster. You know how easy it is for you to end up making a Cyrus in your extra deck, and then they have Apollosa on your board on their board, and you just fusion summon into this. Like it's pretty pretty good. Millennium Mines, you just need to dodge those hand traps. It doesn't dodge Imperm, but it works. Uh, then we got the Links. We got the one Link Karibo, one Almirage, one Sunlight Wolf, one Hita, the one IP Mascarena, one Proxy. This card is so good. Um, the Nightmare, Phoenix, and Unicorn. Then we got the one Axis Code and the one Underworld Goddess. Now... I've made access code so many times. You can OTK with this, especially in this deck. You can special summon it so many times. Uh, Underworld Goddess, I had an opportunity to make it. I didn't, and that ended up losing me the game. But you live and learn. Like I said, you just really need to play this deck uh, so subsequently so that you can have the ability to play every correct play. 
and it gives you that opportunity to not have to worry later on because it's just broken but it can't be broken if you don't play it correctly um yeah so that's the deck guys i hope you guys really enjoyed this uh please you you know mix around with it play around with it use it to you guys advantage see how you guys want to end up playing with it and what you think is better uh but i'm really nice i'm really really like all for this build this build is pretty interesting i will probably change it up later once people get used to the super poly engine but we'll see how that goes thank you guys for watching please like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys next time